Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. Our number, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today or if you have a comment or success story, we love hearing from you. 844-236-6010 is our number. And we'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do on the bright side, at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, please head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products off the website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. Ask about joining the Bright Side Ben team. 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben team. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a longevity business, be in business for yourself, enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, work out of your home, work as many or as few hours as you like, or you can just get your products at the wholesale price if you so desire. $25 will get you in, and we'd love to have you on the Brightside Ben team. Call 866-735-2470 or sign up directly off the website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Our Truth Transdermal C Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar Magazine. Our Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, and our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, all, pro all our Truth products, including our new Truth Plant-derived fulvic mineral, biomimetic mineral mist made with high aluronic acid and amino acids and fulvic and colloidal minerals and lactate, and that's it. They're, they're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactant water, or any of, uh, anything your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our truth treatments. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking cell health as it regards the skin. Every single skin health issue is about the cell, just like every single health challenge we have is about the cell. We never hear about this. Doctors don't tell us about the cell. We don't hear about the cell from the medical model. We drug the cell. We radiate the cell. We electrocute the cell. That's called ablation. We surgically extract the cell, but we never feed the cell. We never nourish the cell. We never oxygenate the cell. We never love the cell. Loving the cell is not part of the medical model. We have to love the cell ourselves. That's really what's happening here at the end of the day. Give the cell some love. Why don't we give the cell some love? Because we don't really know what it is. We don't really even understand it. And that itself is understandable because we didn't really learn about the cell or, or cell theory, as it's called, the idea that the body is made up of cells. It's called cell theory. It really didn't get going until the early part of maybe the early to middle part of the 19th century. I think it was about 1830 or so when cell theory was first started to 
when uh, a guy named uh, Schwann, Theodore Schwann, came up with this concept, the, the idea that there was that the body's made up of cells. We've known about cells since the, since the 1600s. Uh, this guy, Leeuwenhoek, came up with the, he was the guy who invented the microscope, actually, and he started to, uh, he started to analyze stuff. He, imagine, this was like uh, just out of the dark ages, and this guy invents the microscope, and all of a sudden he could see this entire universe, this entire world that nobody had any idea, even imagined or could conceive in their brain existed. The, the world of the nano. The world of the micro, the world of the cell, the world of uh, the world of living creatures that were invisible to the eye. There was an entire universe that was discovered when they when the uh, magnifying glass was first invented. First thing he did was scrape his teeth and put put the dental scrapings in in the microscope, and he couldn't believe it. That's how he discovered bacteria. They called them animalcules because they didn't know what they were. They thought they were mo mo uh, it was like a cross between a molecule and an animal. He looked at his, his, the scum, the, the, the scrapings <laughs> off his teeth. He did his saliva. They did blood. They did, all, they did all of these biological fluids, and they started to see these little creatures, and they started to see these little building blocks, these components. They called them cells. First guy to really discover, uh, discover the cell was a guy named Robert Hooke, and he actually called it a cell because it looked to him like little... Uh, like uh, the kind of uh, rooms that monks used to live in. They called them cells. That's where the f word first came from. The monks used to live in these little square rooms called cells, and Robert Hooke named these little things cells because they looked like the rooms that monks were in. Anyway, so cell theory didn't really get going as a part of biology until the late, or, or as the middle part of, uh, early to middle part of the 19th century, or like around 1830 or so. So we could be forgiven for having a medical model that does not take cell health into account. Because right around the same time is when we start to get into drugs, a little bit later. Drugs really started, uh, uh, organic chemistry drugs, they were always herbal drugs, but organic chemistry drugs, synthesized drugs, really didn't get going until the 1860s, about 30 years later. So cell theory and drug theory came kind of came along at the same time. <clears throat> and because there was so much money to be made in drugs, guess what won? Drug theory. The idea that we could drug the body rather than address the cell. It never really even dawned. I never, never even dawned on anybody that we could address the cell. That really got going. It isn't even, I shouldn't say that. That's starting to get going now, the idea that we can address the cell with this thing called membrane uh, lipid replacement theory. But still, we're not talking about addressing the cell. In fact, I never hear, this is the only program you're going to hear somebody talking about addressing the cell, working with the cell. The good news is the cell doesn't really need very much. It needs food, it needs oxygen, and it needs a clean place to do its work, period. That's all it needs. And you know what? Food, oxygen, and a clean place to do its work have nothing to do with the doctor. Nothing. They have everything to do with how we live our lives. Food, oxygen, and a clean place to do its work. And when I say clean place to do its work, I mean an environment, a cell environment that doesn't have drugs in it, that doesn't have poisons in it, and that doesn't have a lot of sugar in it. Sugar, after a little tiny infinitesimal amount of glucose that has to be in there, the rest of it is like a toxin to the cell. Cells are swimming in a soup. They're swimming in a watery environment. And that watery environment has to be healthy, has to be conducive to health. That watery soup has, that the cells are swimming in has to be filled with nutrition, has to be packed with oxygen, and has to be cleansed and devoid of toxicity. That's how a cell is healthy. Now, cells can adjust, the body can adjust, and cells can adjust, and that's true, but they reach a point of overload, and that's when a cell becomes sick, and then we become sick. And nobody thinks to address the toxic environment that the cell is sitting in. And that's the dirty little secret of medicine and what the medical model will never tell us. The medical model will never tell us because it's useless at the level of a cell. And that is true about drugs and surgery and radiation and ablation. And guess what? It's also true about moisturizing creams and zit creams and gold bond medicated ointment creams. None of these address the health of the skin cell. None of these address the health of the cell. But the health of the cell itself is secondary follows the health of the cell membrane. That cell membrane, that little sliver of molecules, that little sliver of stuff, 
That's the key to everything. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. Don't go away. Got more good health information coming at you right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. Got lines open for you, and we'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour. Got questions about uh, skin health, dry skin, acne. Acne doesn't sound like it would be the end of the world, but, man, that could be psychologically de- debilitating. Psoriasis. Yesterday we talked to a, a guy who had uh, probably listening out there who had a condition called pemphigus vulgaris, which is just this really just a, a, a terrible skin condition where the skin just bubbles up with awful, awful blisters. There's another, another terrible skin condition called hydrogenitis superativa, where, where you get these boils all over your body. I mean, there's terrible things that can happen to the skin. And, and for the most part, not for the most part, for all the part, with the exception of steroids and, and uh, immune suppressant drugs, there's nothing the dermatologist can do. Do you know if you go to the dermatologist today, you'll get the same medicine you got in 1950? What does that tell you about this ridiculous specialty, if you call it that, called dermatology. You get the same medicine that you got in 1950, the same type of medicine, different brand names or maybe some high-tech versions of the type of medicine. But basically, you get immune suppressants and antibiotics, period. What does that tell you? First of all, antibiotics tells you, the fact that they use antibiotics tells you that there's a bacterial component, but it's not primary. And the fact that they give you immune suppressant drugs tells you that the immune system is involved. There you got your skin problems right there in a nutshell. Immunity and bacteria. Bacteria is rare, by the way. And antibiotics for skin is pretty, is pretty much a useless, for skin conditions, is pretty much a useless strategy. Steroid drugs, the immune drugs, they'll work because they shut down the immune system. The skin is an immune system structure. It's part of the immune system. It's part of the defense system. The skin is a defensive structure. It's also an intelligent structure. It's a brain. The epidermis is the body's third brain. And just like the outside part of the body, the covering of the body, the membrane of the body is a brain. The membrane of a cell is the brain. A cell is a miniature version of us. It's a miniature microcosm of of the organism of which it makes up. It has a skeleton. It has a, a, a digestive system. It has an immune system. It has a nervous system. And it has a brain. It has a, the same kind of information processing system that we have, except obviously it's on a smaller scale. It's very tiny, ridiculously tiny. And so that it should, just like the health of our body depends on the health of our brain, the health of a cell depends on the health of, of its brain. As goes the health of the cell, so goes the health of the body. But as goes the health of the cell membrane, so goes the health of the cell. The membrane is one of the primary epigenetic structures of the cell. When we talk about epigenetics, which is the science of what turns on the gene, and remember, it's not about genetics that controls the body. It's epigenetics. This is what Dr. Wallach's been talking about for decades. He has a book. You want to read a really good book about uh, the, history of, the history of medical thought or medical theory? Really easy to read. It's not complicated. It's a very interesting read, especially like history. Read epigenetics, I, my favorite Dr. Wallach book. So the membrane is the primary epigenetic structure. When we talk about epigenetics, what turns on the gene, we're talking about the membrane. We all, the, the DNA and the nucleus, they, they're involved too. But we're, the, one of the primary ways the body controls the genetics is by the membrane, this tiny little structure a million times smaller than an ant, 20,000 times smaller, uh, thinner than a human hair. Can you imagine this? Can you imagine something this tiny that has this kind of role to play in the health of the body? This little sliver, 20,000 times thinner than human hair, interprets the environment the cell is in, just like our brain interprets our environment and communicates that message to the body. The cell membrane interprets the environment it's sitting in and interprets that message to the DNA, to the inside part of the cell and to the DNA. It's swimming in a soup. That soup has to be packed with oxygen and nutrients and free of toxicity. When that soup is appropriate, when that cellular soup is appropriate, the soup 
that the cell is sitting in. If you're a chemist or biologist, you call it the interstitial fluid, but we'll call it. And by the way, if you, a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was last week, they had an organ. They had a, there was news out about a new organ. I, I don't know. I mentioned it a little bit on this, on the program. I didn't talk about it a lot. This new organ is a fluid filled canal that lives underneath all the surfaces of the body. Even the interior surfaces of the body have this, have this fluid filled canal. That fluid filled canal is an accumulation of all the fluids that surround the cells. It's a, story, it's a storage deposit for all the fluid that surrounds the cells. When there's no fluid surrounding the cells or when the fluid is toxic, surrounding the cells, I should say, or when the fluid is mal is, uh, doesn't have the nutrients or it's hypoxic, doesn't have the oxygen that it needs, the cell's going to become sick. When this fluid is healthy, oxygen rich, nutrient rich, it's clean, the cell gets the message that all is right in the world, it can perform, it can use its resources, and muscle cells can muscle, and heart cells can heart, and skin cells can skin, and kidney cells can kidney. When that fluid is less than, less than uh, 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 nutrient dense and oxygen rich and, and it's toxic, the opposite happens. Heart cells cannot heart. When heart cells cannot heart, we get heart disease. When gallbladder bladder cells cannot gallbladder, we get gallbladder disease. When liver cells cannot liver, we get liver disease. Liver cells, heart cells, skin cells, kidney cells, gallbladder cells, brain cells, they don't do their business when the environment is toxic. And that's how all chronic degenerative disease shows up. And all chronic degenerative disease begins with one little tiny cell not getting what it needs. And we don't notice it because we've got billions of these things in every organ, or you know, maybe hundreds of billions in, org in some of the organs. So we've got billions of these things, and when one of them dies, and we don't even notice it. And two of them die, we don't even notice it. A million of them can die, we don't even notice it. 10 million can die, and we don't even notice it. 100 million can die, and then all of a sudden we go, Oh my gosh, oh, that hurts. Oh my, I can't breathe. Oh, my heart, is, it's bouncing up and down. It's not getting, the heart cells are not getting enough oxygen. It's fibrillating. And we say, well, I was just sitting here minding my own business and all of a sudden I got a heart attack. And I was sitting here minding my own business and all of a sudden I got arthritis. Because we don't know that for 20 years or 30 years or 40 years or 50 years, our cells have been dying one at a time because they've been in an environment that's toxic malnourished or, or undernutriated and uh, hypoxic, low, low oxygen. And the first place it's going to show up is at the level of the membrane. If you got a sick membrane, if you got a broken down membrane, nothing else will work. The membrane is not only the brain of the cell, it's not only what communicates an unhealthy environment to the rest of the cell and to the genetics, but the membrane itself can become broken down and the membrane itself can become sick. And this is so important. This is where membrane lipid replacement therapy comes in. And membrane lipid replacement therapy doesn't have to be anything fancy schmancy. It could be an egg. An egg is membrane lipid replacement therapy. Thus the value of eggs. And by the way, thus the value of foods that we're told not to eat, like eggs and dairy and organ meats. Or I should say, we're not necessarily told not to eat organ meats, but people have this idea that meat is somehow something we should be eating less and less of. It turns out that meat, organ meat, is a rich source of this cholesterol complex, what I call the cholesterol complex, that contains all the membrane lipids, with the exception of perhaps the uh, essential fatty acids. All right. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side, and we do have lines open, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the skin or skin health or ingredients, our true skin health products, skin diseases or health challenges on the skin like acne or psoriasis that you may be dealing with, 844-236-6010. I know we've been talking about skin here for a month or so, maybe more, five weeks, six weeks. And we'll move on to other parts of the body. But the skin's just so fascinating. And we're all, we all interact. Now, even if we're quote unquote healthy, and of course, very few of us are fully healthy, but even if we're reasonably healthy, we still use moisturizers for the most part, wrinkle creams, eye creams, sunscreens, 
almost everybody interacts with skincare products or skin care something on some level, even babies. So it's a really important subject and we spent a lot of money on skincare products and we spent a lot of money going to the dermatologist. And I always laugh and I know it's not nice, but in my head I laugh, not out loud. When I hear somebody tell me, when somebody tells me that they got a skin problem and they're going to go to the dermatologist. Because I know exactly what's going to happen. They're going to get an antibiotic or a steroid cream. That's pretty much it. And this is why nobody gets better when they go to the dermatologist. Nobody's skin gets better when they go to the dermatologist or perhaps their skin symptoms go away if they use steroids. And, that, and steroids are pretty darn effective, I have to tell you. Steroid, steroid top, uh, steroids like prednisone and dexamethasone, these are very effective drugs in the sense that they will hide your symptoms. They will mask your symptoms. They will shut down your symptoms. Why? Because they are powerful immune suppressants. And if you like that strategy, well, you know, have at it. Personally, I'm thinking, why is my immune system jacked up? And almost always you're going to find food involved. And speaking of food and, the, uh, and skin, got an article here from the uh, Society for Investigative Dermatology, published in 2003. Consumption of antioxidants, lutein and zeaxanthin. Lutein and zeaxanthin are both types of antioxidants, plant antioxidants, uh, carotenoid, uh, carotenoids, colored, pigment, antioxidant antioxidants. Consumption of antioxidants, lutein and zeaxanthin, found in green leafy vegetables, diminished the effects of ultraviolet B, UVB radiation, by reducing acute inflammatory responses and UV-induced rebound. That means they're sunscreens. Yes, eating your green leafy vegetables is a sunscreen. I've been saying this for years. It's not just the green leafies either. It's anything with colors. They're natural sunscreens. They're natural photoprotection. They're natural substances that will protect your skin better than a sunscreen because it's coming from the inside out, not the outside in. And, and when I say better, I mean in a non-toxic way. Completely non-toxic. Sunscreens are toxic substances. Make no mistake about it. If you were to drink your sunscreen, you'd be in big trouble. If you were to eat your sunscreen, you'd be in big trouble. From the, uh, let's see, where is this from? The Department of Molecular Biology and Immunology at the University of North Texas. Psychological stress and the immune response. Apparently, there's an interplay between psychological stress and the immune response that affects dermatitis and psoriasis. Again, where have you heard this before? It makes perfect sense because psoriasis or uh, uh, stress produces steroid hormones, which shut down the immune system and make you more susceptible to immune problems and autoimmune problems. A weak immune system, a weakened immune system, is more likely to be set off, it's more likely to be jumpy. Psychological stress weakens the immune system and makes us more susceptible to skin health challenges, to skin diseases. If you tell this to your dermatologist, he'll laugh and he'll say there's no evidence. Send him to... Uh, the Journal for Dermatology Research and Practice, volume 2012, published in October of 2012. Psycho it's headline, Psychological Stress and the Cutaneous Immune Response, Roles of the Sympathetic Nervous System in Atopic Dermatitis and Psoriasis. So if your doctor says, there's no evidence to prove that it shows that, and I don't even, you don't even need a, an article in a magazine in a journal to tell you what common sense will tell you, but just send them to uh, the Journal for Dermatology Research and Practice, volume 2012, October of 2012. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we got lots of lines open for you. Let's go to Pennsylvania and say good morning to Stephen. You're going to get a lot of air time today, Stephen. I know you always got a lot to say. What's going on, buddy? Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Ben. Yes, And sir. I want to congratulate you again on your fantastic uh, efforts Thank everything you, you do, Thank and, you. And, and, and and what I have learned from you so far, it has just made my life. Is that I right? Oh, that's that's big. Come on, I, I don't, I, I, don't exaggerate I, now. You, but you, I'm sure no, I help. I'm serious. <laughs> uh, uh, without you, I'd be I wouldn't be the uh, right. 
the man I am. Well, I'll cut the, no, let's not get carried away. But thank you. I appreciate. Well, I, mean, I appreciate the love. Started. I appreciate you the caught, love. You, you did get me started. Thank you. I appreciate the love. <laughs> so what's what's going on, Steve? I uh, wanted to. Uh, uh, you were talking about lipids from meat, uh, yeah, but you said that you can't get the uh, EPA uh, what, EFAs. E, e, the yeah, essential fatty acids. You'll get you'll get some of the DHA. You'll get some of the. Uh, you know, it's not. You'll get some of the DHA if you if you have grass fed grass fed meat, and you'll get some of the DHA and the EPA from. Uh, from fish and seafood, but I don't know if you'll get the parent omega three. I can't think. I don't know of any meats that will have the parent omega three or the parent omega six. Do you? You probably get. You'll probably get them, but when you process them, they'll they'll well, when you cook them, they'll be destroyed. What I did here uh, is that if you make uh, let's say chicken soup and you skin the chicken, yeah, you the skin. The, yeah, you all the you won't get any nu- nu- nutrient value that that now the. The, the skin has the same. That uh, has some omegas in it. The skin definitely has omegas yeah, in it. That's true. Yeah, same as fish, uh, yeah, uh, wild yeah, yeah. Uh, fish. That's but, true. You know, and I take that back. Uh, let me take that back because your, your point's well taken. As I think about it, there are omega 6s and omega 3s in meat, but the cooking and the grilling, I, I can't imagine they would survive that. Well, I think cooking. chicken soup. I'm talking about chicken soup. Yeah. I don't even chicken soup. I don't know if it would survive. Mm. Oh, you have to eat. It, it may or may not. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's certainly not a great source of EFAs, but but you get the saturated fats, and the saturated fats are also important for the cell membrane. The cell membrane is kind of like a balance between saturated fat, cholesterol, and uh, and essential fatty acids. It's about fifty percent fat, and of that fat, it's kind of like ratios and proportions of all three. Okay. And if you don't have the right fats and the right proportions, you're not going to have a healthy cell membrane. And if you're EFA deficient, you're definitely not going to have healthy cell membranes. Yeah, that's Even the point. That's the topic that I want to discuss. The yeah. uh, uh, oils. How okay. to get the uh, uh, the body to function better. A lot of times people are getting clogged up uh, with, uh, uh, the, with wrong the, uh, fats. Uh, yeah, it's the you know it's the combination of the of the cholesterol, the fat combined yeah. with the calcium. Yeah. And uh, my understanding, uh, my my question is going to be how to uh, keep that fat uh, solidified with uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, the the type of substances we need. And, and I know certain substances, the uh, sub sub uh, uh, substances that are makes like soap suds are in the ginsengs, all the ginsengs. And maybe that is why the ginsengs are so healthy for people, because they, they emulsify the, help emulsify the fats. Um, I, maybe. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know necessarily that's true. And then the, I, I have to think about I have, that. I have, I have something else to say. I'll, are you talking I'll, about I'll, saponins? You're talking about these soap-like yes. substances, the saponins? Mm-hmm. You know, let me yucca. think about that. I'm not sure how that would yucca. work, and I'm, I'm not quite understanding what you're saying either. So hang on, because it's just me and you here today, okay? So don't go away, all right? All right, uh, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, and we do have lines open, 844-236-6010. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side, talking to Steve. Got lines open, 844-236-6010, and uh, talking to Steven. All right, what's going on? I didn't quite understand what you're saying there about the ginseng uh, and the sap, the soaps, yeah, well, soap-like compounds. And I go ahead. Uh, had uh, my my dad, and unfortunately passed away. He was uh, in the in the you know in the, in the care of the pharmaceutical medical people at the yeah. uh, brothel, and okay. uh, local brothel, and uh, he uh, and I had uh, 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 con- uh, um uh, commissioned a, uh, a, a, a pharmacist uh, that would, uh, it's actually the only pharmacist in Pennsylvania that would uh, prescribe nutrients to put in a feeding tube, okay? Uh, but uh, that didn't go anywhere because uh, where he was. And uh, But he said, he told me, he sent me, I had everything ready. It's, it's a long story, but I got something from him, and he said, Give him this. I said, well, his kidneys are failing. Okay, when you get old and, and you're dying. Steve, you, you got to get to get to the chase. Okay, cut to the uh, chase it here. The, uh, it was the, uh, it was the uh, yucca extract. He said, don't uh-huh. worry about it. His kidneys will start up again. And from, the, will... from yucca extract? Yeah. Yucca is yeah, really rich in those saponins? Mm-hmm. Is that I what you're talking yeah. about? Well, 
I know you could use yucca in an emergency soap. survival situation. You, yeah, like you get the shampoo leaves, you rub or them between your hands, and it makes soap suds. Yeah, that's exactly right. It has a, a lot of saponins. Uh, there's a few plants, soapboard also, kilaha is another one. There's a few plants that have that. But I'm not sure what you're saying about these saponins yeah, well, and, I, and the fats. I'm just mostly concerned about oils, okay, about okay. how, you know, everybody's, uh, everybody's getting all caked up with, the, they're getting clogged up. The, uh, the oils, my understanding is uh, uh, there's no uridium in the, uh, in, in, the, in the soil in the United States. Of America. I think the I don't know about the iridium, but I think the problem is more like fried and processed fats. And we all love our fried fatty foods, but you know what, Stephen? If we replace our fried fatty foods with regular fat, like butter or coconut oil, yeah. you won't want the fried fatty foods as much. It'll cut into your cravings. Our cravings for fried fatty food and the fact that we find fried fatty food with salt on it is darn irresistible is because we're fat deficient and because we're salt deficient. And you can test this out yourself. If you get some coconut oil or some butter and then enjoy as much of it as you want and then put lots of salt, do uh, maybe some, some, cal some Himalayan salt. By the way, I just found out, I was just reading how there's little microplastics in ocean salt, which is kind oh, of a, an interesting issue. Now we're ingesting microplastics with our Celtic sea salt. Oh, hopefully not Celtic as bad as some of the sea salts. Anyway, um, if you take a little bit of Himalayan salt and put it in water, and then make sure you're eating your coconut oil, your butter to your heart's delight and heart's content, you're not going to want the fried fatty food as much. We think we like bacon. I hear people joking about how much they love bacon. It's like it's real funny, and, and bacon's the fourth, you know, like the fifth food group or the sixth food group and that, all that stuff. Guess what? If you didn't have fat in your bacon, you wouldn't like it very much. And if yep. you didn't have a lot of salt in the bacon, you wouldn't like it very much either. Can you imagine a piece of bacon wasn't fatty and uh, salty? Unless you have cancer or a psoriasis, it'll cause it to go crazy. Uh, it's almost totally indigestible. Well, the, 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 the point is, is that it's the fat and the salt we like. We can't get enough fat and salt because we're deficient. So what do you do? You replace the fat and salt in a healthy way with Himalayan salt and also minerals, by the way, uh, plant-derived minerals, and then uh, and butter and but coconut oil. You misunderstood what I was saying about the, uh, your, the arteries caking up. You're saying this is the oil. It's not the oil. What I'm saying, it's the... Uh, 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 it's the uh, 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 allegedly, the uh, uh, uridium... It helps the bacteria. Are you process. saying iridium, I-R-I-D, iridium? It's, it's in turmeric. It, it's, in, it, it's, it's in that part of the world. There's a lot of iridium in the soil. You're talking about iridium, I-R. I don't know what iridium you're, you're, is. Why, uh, I, uh, why, uh, that's, uretrium? Uh, Are you talking about uretrium? Uh, because we're why. Uh, uretrium. uretrium. It'll be on a periodic table. I know what you're talking about, but I, I hadn't heard that about uretrium. Yeah, that, that helped. What, 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 uh, Wayne uh, Blakely from Living Streams uh, Probiotics. He uh, talks about uretrium? Iridium. Okay. All right. Iridium. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Iridium. That's the iridium. I'm sorry. There's but, iridium uh, and there's iridium. But what's your point? Uh, yeah. It, it turns the calcium. Uh, uh, there's I forgot what the gentleman's name. So is. So you're saying that the soil is deficient yes, in it minerals? Makes, it makes a fake calcium in the body. Oh okay, yeah. You're, you're you're getting the weeds, my friend. You got to get understand chemistry a little bit better before you start throwing stuff around like that. Stephen, listen. I got. I want to get one more call in. And then uh, it it, it, it I'm going to start. I'm going to look up your reach. Digest I'm, your uh, amino foods into amino acids. I, I'm, I'm, you've got me a little bit lost. And I, I'm going to let you go here, but I'm going to look into that because that's kind of interesting to me. Yeah, your retrium, but you need the bacteria to with the to with the turmeric to make it happen. The I will bacteria. be looking into that. I appreciate your call, Stephen. Thank you, my friend. Okay, have, a, have a great day, buddy. Didn't quite understand what my friend Stephen was saying, but I will be looking into that. Cliff in Ottawa, what's going on? Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Not too bad, sir. Yeah, like to follow up on the oils, because this yes, is sir. what got me interested. I'm really interested in balancing the oils in my body. Yeah. Now, like you recommended Udo's uh, oils. And yes, oils Udo's blend. Too, but also the, uh, what I've been using is Carlson's fish oil. Yeah. Uh -huh. I switched over to Carlson's, uh, like, cod liver oil, which I haven't started using yet. But I'm wondering, like, I want to eliminate mayonnaise out of my my diet too. Yeah. I'm wondering if I could just let's say I take a couple of boiled eggs, right? Yeah. And I just had a bit of like Udo's oil. It's so delicious. Can't... It's so delicious, Cliff. I can't even tell you. Put salt and pepper and Udo's on your eggs, so, or I... or Tony Chatteries. I don't know if you heard of that. So, yeah, a, uh, no, no. A, a, but I'm, Tony... what be about like balancing it out? Like, should I take the cod liver oil? No, nah, the oil, yeah. fish oil is not so tasty. Fish oil is not so tasty, but the Udo's and egg is so delicious. I do it, I, I do it all the time. I, I, well, at least two or three days a week. 
What about overdoing the oils? Like, do I have to worry? Like, let's say I take the cod liver oil. Like, let me uh, explain. Let me. That's a great question, Cliff. Let me answer that question. Yeah, yeah. Nobody knows. There's no answer to that question. And nobody okay. has any idea about the ratios. Nobody has yeah. any idea about the amounts because, and I'll tell you why. See, we're yeah. not supposed to get our oils from Udo's, and we're not supposed to get our oils from, from supplements. We're supposed to get our oils from foods. And in yeah. foods, they're perfectly balanced when you eat a perfectly balanced diet. But once you start supplementing, you, there's no way to know, and it is, it's potentially a problem, but there's no other option. You know, yeah. and, and I've said this so many times before, supplementing is always like that. Supplementing is not the perfect way to get your nutrients. It's just the only way to get your nutrients. You can't yeah. get them from food. And so the balances of the minerals and the balances of the vitamins, they're very, it's really, they're, they're important to take into account and they're very hard to, to know what that balance is. And I would imagine that de depending on your circumstances and the foods you're eating and your lifestyle and your environment, that balance is going to change. So it's just a tricky thing, and there's no way to know about the fats. The only way to do it is go by your symptoms. Go by your skin, go by your okay. cravings for fats, and go by your health challenges, whatever they may be. You want improvements in everything. You want improvements in your cravings, improvements in your skin health, and you're looking for improvements in your health, uh, in your health challenges, whatever those are. And, and that's the only way to go. That's the only way to, to, to do it. And it, you got to take some experimenting, and there's a learning curve, and you got to listen to shows like this, and you got to you got to yeah. do your research. There's just all kinds of things that you have to take into account. Yeah. All right? Balance the three, six, nine. This is what uh, you know, to. you hear people say you get too much six. I don't believe you get too much six. And yeah. nine is not essential. It's basically nine, a, a three and six. And yeah. sometimes they'll tell you something is a, is a three, but it's not essential. See, essential is different from omega-3 and omega-6. You can have yeah. something that's an omega-3 and omega-6 that's not essential. Essential oh, means, and there's only two essentials. You understand? It's not DHA. Yeah. It's not EPA. It's not the stuff you get out of fish. They're called alpha linoleic and I'm sorry. They're called alpha linolenic and they're called linoleic acid. Those are the three. Okay. Those, those are the two: omega six and omega three. Good to know. See, that's uh, okay. Now that I learned something there, you know, that's good. Right. Those are the only two that your body cannot make. Your body can make everything else, and the big yeah. and the and the only place to get those kinds of parent omega they're called parent omega threes and omega sixes. The only place to get them is pretty much from grains, seeds, nuts, grasses, algae, um, okay. sea, uh, uh, not even seafood. Seafood's got the the DHA and EPA, but not the parent. Pretty much the only place to get them is from animals that are eating grasses and grains and seeds and nuts. And uh, pretty much that's it. You know, fruit, vegetables, vegetables will have some. Not a lot, though. There's, it, they're very difficult to get from foods, and they're easily broken down through heat, from heat and chemical processing. All right? So the only way, to, in my opinion, is to get it through supplementation. Go ahead. What were you going to say? You know, like you said, and if I'm not mistaken, what I read on the like, bottle of Udo's oil is that that's from algae. So therefore... That would be the best Algae choice. have the DHA and EPA, but they may because they're kind of like a plant themselves, algae. They're sort yeah. of like a cross between a plant and an animal. They may have yeah. some parent omega-3s. i, I got to look into that. I'm not positive. But I'm, I'm going to guess that they do have parent omega-3s in there. And uh, if you had your choice, like one last question. If you had your choice, right, between the, the cod liver oil and the Udo's oil, like other limited bus, bus If I had to have one or the other, I'd take the Udo's. Okay, good. That's all I need to know, and I really okay. appreciate the help. I really appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you, Cliff. Have a great day, buddy. All right, that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products. And don't forget about truthtreatments.com for all our truth skin health products. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We will talk to you all later. Bye for now.